Boy, look, you have heard me talk about GMOs, glyphosate, the threat on humanity that it, that it is. However, Jeffrey Smith, he is the leader in this information, the science, the lobbying. You're going to hear shocking information here, information that uh, I had to step away from and realize this is the real problem going on. This is a threat that really threatens our grandchildren and our grandchildren's children and on and on. And yet we can do something about it. You're going to find out what you can do about it on the immediate side of our health. If you're looking for your health back, this could be another reason that why you can't get your health back or why you can't fix your gut. It's all here in this episode of Cell TV. Check it out. Hey, I want to tell you about one of our sponsors, Cyto Detox. Look, podcasts cost money. There's a lot of production uh, going around this, but uh, we are grateful to have Cyto Detox as one of the sponsors. It's so easy for me to talk about the product because myself and my family use it constantly as we practice what I preach. For over 15 years, I've talked about and taught doctors and the public about cellular detox. And I'll tell you, Cyto was a breakthrough. Cyto was a breakthrough for us. Um, and it's changed so many lives. So we're grateful that they sponsor Cellular Healing TV. It makes sense, doesn't it? They should. If you're listening to this podcast and want to access the amazing Cyto Detox product Dr. Pompa just mentioned, please visit detoxoffer.com. Again, that's detoxoffer.com. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Cellular Healing TV. I'm Ashley Smith, and today we welcome the world's leading expert on GMOs, Jeffrey Smith. Named Person of the Year by Masters of Health magazine, Jeffrey wrote the world's best-selling book on GMOs, directed five documentaries, and has delivered thousands of lectures and interviews over his 25 years of service. Please check out our show notes to learn how to stream his newest short film, Don't Let the Gene Out of the Bottle. I cannot wait to hear more. So let's welcome Jeffrey Smith and, of course, Dr. Pompa to the show. Welcome, both of you. Thank you. Great to be here. Yeah, gosh, I, I said uh, to Ashley, you know, you and I go way back. I mean, uh, you know, we go, we go back when this topic first started. And, you know, I was hot on the topic. And I, I guess I heard one of your lectures at a seminar we were both teaching at. And I realized this guy has been on this topic a lot deeper than me. <laughs> so. Well, I, it's easy. You get to, I mean, people come to you with all sorts of problems. I get to be straight vanilla GMOs and go very, very deep. Yeah. In my mind, you've been the leader in this. You've been there early on before it was popular, before anyone has really cared, knew about it, uh, wrote about it. Uh, you've done more in this topic for humanity than anybody I know. And, and Ashley just had to cherry pick your, uh, your bio because there was, there's been so much, literally. And uh, Ashley was amazed at you know, how much you do, but you've been at it a while. Look, I, this interview is not gonna be information that people's, people have heard before. Uh, you've been so dug into the trenches here that I think you're gonna shock some people. Oh, with without a doubt, without yeah. a doubt, without <laughs> yeah, a doubt. So, you know, and, and even me, I, I, I've been wondering, you know, on this topic, uh, you know, where you've been, and I said, I almost want to stay naive about it because I, I am so curious myself, even just reading some of the footnotes. But look, I, you know, this is a topic that is way more serious than anybody thinks. I, you know, in our space, we talk about GMOs, we talk about glyphosate, and you know, it, it's almost become that thing of like, oh yeah, and get rid of that. But yet, I go out to dinner with people in our space, people that really care, honestly, and I'm amazed what they allow into their diet. And I'm not going to throw anyone under the bus, but I am amazed. My wife and I go through great lengths to avoid these things that you're going to talk about. I mean, great lengths where we will drill people. We call restaurants ahead. We make sure we can get certain things and not certain things. There's hidden uh, things in GMOs uh, within the, the world of GMOs and glyphosate. And you have to know what you're looking for. But you're also going to be bringing some new stuff here. Uh, we're going to let the, the gene out of the bottle, and uh, I'll just leave it at that on the, on the new topic. But uh, look, uh, you know, 
let's just start a little bit broad here because believe it or not, there's some new people, right? Uh, the word genetically modified organism, GMO, uh, glyphosate, these are probably words that they hear, but they really maybe don't understand the impact on their health. Let's kind of broaden that and then we'll dig in deep. Sure, and I'm gonna say, Dr. Papa, that, that when I talk about shocking people, it'll be shocking in two different levels. Uh, one in terms of the new existential threat on the block, which many believe are is more dangerous than climate change, whether it is or it isn't, it's at that level and it's GMO 2.0. And that's gonna be some shocking information of mm -hmm. what almost came to pass. Some of the cataclysms that almost happened as a result, we'll get into that. Mm -hmm. The other shock is gonna be taking what you said about this, yeah, we know about GMOs and Roundup when we try to avoid them. It's gonna focus in on the fact that it may be the most powerful driver of disease in this century. Um, and that's a lot to say, and I, but I can back it up with all sorts of evidence that it may in fact be that, but whether it is or isn't, it may be driving the listener's disease. And there's a way to find out, and we'll go into that. So, oh, yes, and that's a lot of my audience, people that aren't well yet going, why? Right. Yeah. So, OK, so genetically modified glyphosate that they're spraying the heck out of on genetically modified organisms. Give us the um, the, the big overview of man, why do I need to avoid this? We'll talk about how to avoid it in a minute. But right. why? Why? To your well, point, so, it's so dangerous, causing all these diseases, you know, which I agree with, by the way. But why? Sh what's the problem here? Well, first of all, GMO, genetically modified organisms, you change the DNA in a way that the biotech industry originally claimed, oh, it's safe and pre precise and predictable and now they admit it isn't safe and precise and predictable at all it has massive collateral damage in the dna which could create allergens and toxins and carcinogens and new diseases and, and, and when you problem. say in the dna we're talking about the person who eats it it changes their dna no, i'm talking about the genetically engineered organism in the plant okay. in the plant now there is a yeah we're gonna get there we're gonna get we'll get there we'll get there and it is generically inherently unsafe. Uh, a, a very good friend of mine, Dr. Arpad Pustai, passed away at the end of last year. I'm doing a memorial piece for him. He's, the, he's featured in the first chapter of my book. He was given three million bucks by the UK government to figure out how to test for the safety of GMOs and did some tests on rats and discovered that the inherent, pro the generic process of genetic engineering caused potentially precancerous cell growth in the digestive tract, smaller brains, livers, and testicles, partial atrophy of the liver, damaged immune system in just 10 days. And it's the same process that caused the problem in rats that's used to create the GMOs that we eat and the GMO food companies never test it to the level that he did and would miss all of those problems that I just mentioned. And that's the traditional GMOs where you take one gene from a species and force it into the DNA of another species. Right. Now there's a new variety of GMOs called gene editing, where you change the gene sequence without necessarily introducing a gene from the outside. And the biotech industry is saying the same thing, it's safe and predictable, but it actually causes, according to Nature Journal, chromosomal mayhem. It is, the collateral damage is a disaster. And yet the governments are allowing gene editing products to be put on the market in the food supply in the environment without any oversight and Why? this gets really dangerous when you realize that gene editing is so cheap and easy you can buy a do-it-yourself kit on amazon for 169 dollars and that is devastating potentially to the gene pool because once you release a gmo you cannot recall it but coming back to and we'll get to the the existential threat when we talk about the microbiome at risk and all that. But getting back to what we eat, the soy, corn, cotton, canola, sugar beets, and alfalfa, the six main GMOs are all engineered to be sprayed with Roundup herbicide or other herbicides. So now you have the toxin that's the GMO itself, and you have the toxin of Roundup that's sprayed on these Roundup ready crops. It's absorbed into the crop, stored in higher concentrations in the food portion and we eat it okay yeah and by the way they're genetically modifying the plant to be able to handle more of the toxin 
uh, and that's why they do it. Because people might say, well, why? Why, why do they have to spray these more? Well, um, because they have depleted the soil. They made the soil weak. So pests you know, or you know, problems, uh, whatever. Yeah, so affect basically, the, basically it, the Roundup Ready system is to make weeding easier. Yes. So right. you can spray right over the tops of grown crops, killing the weeds in the fields. So you have completely clean fields, which is now a badge of honor among the Roundup Ready crop producers, but you have toxic food. Right. Yeah, toxic food. And we know, at least, you know, most people are understanding this, that this chemical glyphosate is creating leaky gut, leaky brain, opens up our protective barriers. Why is that a problem? Because now undigested proteins leak across. We make antibodies to it. That drives autoimmune. It drives inflammation. It drives all kinds of unexplainable symptoms. And many people say, well, I don't have digestive issues. Uh, I read a study where one out of eight don't, yet they have this problem where they're driving their immune system in a negative way, lowering good immunity, cardiac hyperimmunity, and that they may claim that they don't have digestive issues. Many do, however, but I, I think that's the problem. And then we're trying to fix the problem by taking bacteria, right? Just taking some probiotics. Um, you and I would argue that that is impossible um, especially if you keep this stuff in your diet. Well, it's interesting. There's a number of things. I mean, there's more research on the Roundup because it's a chemical and more than the GMOs. When GMOs alone were fed to animals, they had multiple massive tumors, early death, organ damage, all the things I mentioned earlier, um, damaged all sorts of issues. But we have more information on the chemical properties, the health properties, of Roundup and its chief poison, glyphosate. And you mentioned one that's absolutely foundational, that it can create leaky gut. Uh, let's, uh, there, um, there was a top Harvard researcher that wrote an article saying all disease believe, uh, begins in the leaky gut. But there are other aspects. You mentioned the gut bacteria. And there's, I want to give you maybe 10 different modes of action of Roundup and that by the end of this little section here. And it'll be like, my goodness, those are the foundations of health. It's, mm. You can't even think of a foundation of health that doesn't get damaged by Roundup. It's the Darth Vader chemical. So it is an antibiotic. It is a selective antibiotic in that it kills the beneficial bacteria, the beneficial bacteria in our guts and in the soil, and right. not the nasty stuff. So my friend Kieran Krishnan, who's a world expert at the microbiome, the human microbiome, he put glyphosate or Roundup into a model of human gut after it was fed food and inoculated for two, three weeks, put Roundup in there and saw such changes in the microbiome that I went through the 28 different conditions that people reported getting better from when they switched to non-GMO and largely organic food, whether it was fatigue or um, infertility or uh, celiac disease or pain or digestive disorders, obesity, uh, mood disorders, ag ag aggression, or excuse me, depression mm -hmm. and anxiety, all of them. And he went through each, I went through each one of them and I said, could your changes in the gut bacteria cause this skin condition, cause this Parkinson's, cause this um, Alzheimer's? And each one of them, it could contribute or create that. That was just the microbiome. That long list of diseases just from there. The leaky gut has a long list of diseases. But you see, Roundup or glyphosate was originally patented to descale industrial boilers and pipes because it's a chelator. It grabs onto the minerals yeah. and strips them off the walls. So what it does in the food and in our bodies is it binds with the minerals, making them unavailable. So now we have mineral deficient food, <clears throat> mineral deficient animal products because the animals eat the, the non the Roundup Ready crops and, and doses of Roundup. And then our free floating minerals, which act as ignitions to solve these metabolic pathways, they can't, they can't function. So that's another long list of diseases. Then there's the mitochondria. There's a aging theory of mitochondria. There's a cancer theory of mitochondria. Mm -hmm. There's so many things that the mitochondria do 
And one thing that they do is they collapse and implode in the presence of glyphosate. You can wow. see it under a microscope. Also, it's interesting when you look at the diseases that are on the rise in the US population in parallel with the increased use of GMOs and Roundup, whether it's irritable bowel or various cancers or um, autism, similar to the list of diseases that people say they got better from when they switched to organic, you can actually pick a particular disorder and link it to a mode of action. For example, insomnia has skyrocketed mm -hmm. in parallel with the increased use of Roundup on GMO soy and corn. Insomnia, our circadian rhythms is governed by melatonin. Melatonin is the conversion factor from serotonin. Serotonin is produced in the gut, 90% of it, yeah. by uh, using tryptophan as a precursor. Tryptophan in the gut is produced by gut bacteria through a shikimate pathway that is completely right. blocked by glyphosate. Yeah. So when you so you can just draw the lines, you know, the, it blocks the ability for the gut bacteria to produce tryptophan, and now you have insomnia. And, oh, and have, by the way, and leading to depression. And, yes. and people are taking psychotropic drugs to deal with those symptoms, which, of course, they have a, a list of complicating factors. <clears throat> you know, Stephanie said, if I remember her research on that years ago and sitting in some of her lectures, you know, I, I used to think um, that I could convince people with that science. <laughs> and then I realized you can't. But you know what? I um, got something to convince people. Okay, good. I got, we'll I got it. My, my father-in-law, um, you know, he would make fun of me or my children when we would talk about that, right? Uh, and then um, all of a sudden he started seeing years later the commercials, the billions that are going out in lawsuits. And, you know, he came to us as if we never talked about it and said, you know, that chemical, you know, there's all kinds of bad lawsuits on that now. So now it became fact to him when he saw that there were actually people awarded because of cancer and other conditions. So I know, I know. Commercials, they, that's where legal things actually are helpful, right? We hate lawyers. We hate, you know, uh, you know, lawsuits that are just meaningless, but I'll tell you, it has moved the needle in people's understanding of, Oh, maybe that roundup I'm spraying in my yard or I heard it. I think it's on my food. I think maybe it's harming me. Oh yeah. Right. I mean, there's so many indicators of glyphosate being a carcinogen. The World Health Organization said it's a probable human carcinogen, but a definite animal carcinogen. New information came out even since then showing uh, breast cancer issues and other problems. New information comes out all the time, linking it clearly as a carcinogen. Um, but you talked well, about convincing- right. for, the attorneys to, for the attorneys to jump on the board, and evidently I, it was millions, now it's billions being awarded. This, that's how, I, I want people to hear that. The reason I brought that up is because that's how solid the science is. Oh yeah, there so was my, three. My, my father-in-law, it was just, yeah, 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 yeah. Your crazy opinion, you guys, are, you guys are crazies. But when he realized that the court is awarding it, now it became fact to him. <laughs> yeah, in fact, I, I attended some of the um, trials. I interviewed the, the presiding attorney for hours and hours and put out a series and I reported on it a lot. And not only did the four plaintiffs win in these first three trials, but the, the jury became aware of just how devious and really horrible and malicious Monsanto's actions were. Really? And they, the punitive damages in one of the cases was two billion. Now it got lowered by the judge, but they wanted to take down this corporation that had lied. I'll give you an example. Um, this is a typical form of Monsanto science because I've documented in in this book behind and, and me. By, by the way, for people to understand, Monsanto is the company that produces the chemical glyphosate that we're spraying on. I mean, it's a big list. It's almost our whole food chain, unless it's 100% organic. Go and ahead. they produce Roundup ready right. crops, and they were bought by Bayer, the aspirin maker. So now the lawsuits are going to Bayer. Mm -hmm. So in the book behind me, Genetic Roulette. Um, I have this whole section on how industry rigs right research. You, by the way. Yeah. <clears throat> and there was, I'm pretty aware of the way that they, they rigged their research and the fraud, but I wasn't aware of this because it came out in the trial in an interview. They're, they have to test the Roundup formulation to see how much gets absorbed into human skin. So they'll take cadaver skin, put Roundup there and see how much gets absorbed. It was over three and a half times, three times the amount of legal allowable absorption. So they 
hid that information from the EPA, never submitted it. Instead, they took, they had to do the test. So here's the Monsanto version of the test. They took the human cadaver skin and baked it for a long time in an oven. Now, you know what happens with meat, it gets really tough. But that wasn't good enough. Then they froze it. Mm. And then they applied the Roundup to it. Hardly any got absorbed, and so that's what they reported. So the amount of fraud, the ghostwriting, the attacking of scientists. I was listed in the last trial because there's a letter where it was basically directing one of their pseudoscientists to attack me. The, the subject line was whack-a-mole because I had written an article on the how GMOs are most dangerous for children. So they were so furious hmm. that the, the compensatory damages were minor compared to the punitive damages. So you asked about convincing others. It took you a while to get your father-in-law on board. Well, I, I, I think I cracked the code on that in a film I did with Amy Hart called Secret Ingredients. You can find it at livehealthybewell.com with some other resources. And in Secret Ingredients, we talk to about a dozen people, some families, some individuals, a clinic uh, doctor, about what they, or in the case of the clinic doctor, their patients, happened when they switched to an organic diet. Mm -hmm. Now, before I say, before I say what happened, which was been able to basically convince everyone who watches it to increase their commitment to organic, even from like 95% to 100. Yeah, and that's the cheap, or that's the easy solution. I say cheap yeah. because typically people are sick and have to go through a lot of other things to get well. But if we have to all start here, but go ahead. So I'm going to explain what happened in the film, but I want to explain why I'm talking organic and not just non-GMO. You see, we believe that both GMOs and Roundup are two major culprits for health, and we can give the data to convince, as I have thousands and thousands of doctors who are prescribing organic foods right now to their patients. So Roundup is not just sprayed on Roundup ready crops. It's sprayed just before harvest to dry down and ultimately right. kill Desiccate. the grains and the beans as a desiccant, exactly. So it's in oats and wheat and the beans and the garbanzos and the lentils in high quantities. Yeah. So it's in our diet unless it's or organic doesn't allow either GMOs around it. So in the film, here's an example. We had uh, a family with 21 chronic conditions between the five members and the mother who was paralyzed and chronic pain, she started experimenting on the family diet, got rid of gluten, got rid of commercial uh, dairy, got rid of soy, different things. And she saw the reactions go down, but she was still managing these categories. Went to organic, they all went away. And then a woman who is a doctor, chiropractor, gets a lot of infertile couples. They come to her because of word of mouth and she has 100%, when the last time I talked to her, 100% success rate at ha of having infertile couples have babies. How? She puts them all on an organic diet. There was about 92 that she, by the time the film ended, and zero fails for those that follow her advice. There were people who had brain fog and digestive disorders and cancer and skin conditions, and everyone was losing weight, and they're real people, but it's not just one-offs. The, the physicians in the film were saying, this is what happens every day in my clinic because I tell my patients to eat organic. And then yeah. some physicians were saying, you know, what's really great is when they switch their diet and their autoimmune disease goes away or their joint pain goes away and then they cheat and all of it comes back and then they realize, aha, it mm -hmm. is the diet and they become more, more dedicated to that organic diet than ever before. Yeah. I think it's uh, it's always step one, you know, just start eating uh, organic and watch the healing start to take place. Like I said, you know, what I see people doing is they're trying to just take some probiotics because that's in vogue. But if you don't go organic, it's in vain because of the amount of destruction that the GMO and the glyphosate is causing to the gut bacteria. I like how you laid it out and all the things because you know, the GMO has its effects, as you explained, right? The leaky gut caused by the chemical has it, its effects and the disruption of the microbiome has its effects, right? And all of these health conditions are linked strongly in, in the science to this. 
you know, I, I guess the, it, this begs the question, right? I mean, if I were listening to this, you know, for the first time, or at least, you know, getting some, gaining some knowledge, my brain would be asked the question, well, how does the government allow this, mm-hmm. right? I mean, how, how, does this, how does this company award billions of dollars in still selling it in the store, right? I see Roundup sold in the store still. Right, and yet the lawsuits are, are there, winning the lawsuits. How, Jeffrey? I don't get it. Well, let's talk about the approval of both GMOs and Roundup because they're sobering for those that still have faith in our regulatory agencies. <clears throat> the person in charge of policy at the FDA was Michael Taylor when the GMO policy was created. He was put in there because the White House told the FDA to promote GMOs. His policy said, we see no substantial difference, no testing necessary, no labeling necessary. In fact, we don't even know of any substantial difference. No one in the, in the agency could find any. Well, that was a lie. Documents made public from a lawsuit seven years after the policy was made public showed that the overwhelming consensus among the scientists working at the agency was exactly the opposite. The GMOs were different and dangerous and needed to be tested. And they said it needed to be tested on humans, not just animals, and it was completely ignored. And then Michael Taylor became Monsanto's vice president and then back to the FDA as the US foods are. And it goes, I mean, that kind of corruption in the FDA is easy to point to. Yeah, I mean, it's the fox guarding the hen house. And, uh, you know, I mean- But let me just say, let me just add this, that EPA was just as bad. The documents that came out from the lawsuit showed Monsanto had its lapdogs working at the EPA on their behalf. And there's quotes and there's horrible collusion. And it was simply um, Monsanto's people in the EPA that allowed it to go on the, on the market to stay. And I, I know Monsanto, um, I had discussions when I was in the Midwest with farmers and they said, yeah, but this is the only seed we can get now. So we're stuck. Yep. Meaning that, you know, if they want to do anything and some of them are even contracted in explain that because Monsanto was very slick uh, in their business dealings where they locked farmers into their seed. And then even, and is, is this true, farms over here that maybe didn't buy into this, that were trying to do things natural when the wind blew uh, seedlings over to their farm, they sued them for stealing product. I would make that more clear, but I know that there was a lot of legal crossover here. So the reason why GMOs were put into the food supply was because the patent on glyphosate was going off in 2000. And so Monsanto created Roundup Ready crops so that farmers had to sign a contract that if they used their seeds, they would use their version of glyphosate based herbicides, Roundup and not the Chinese knockoffs that started coming in 2000. All right, so pretty smart business uh, move there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you're about money and about people, very smart. Absolutely. So they took over the seed supply. They just did a rampage buying of seeds. So instead of massive numbers of seed dealers, there's now just a handful that control almost all the seeds in the world. And Monsanto and Bayer is the biggest, along with the, one of the biggest. And so they cut out, they cut out, the non-GMO, well, well-performing varieties, forcing people to get the GMOs. And then they also found people who had contamination on their farm from wind. Maybe they, a few of them tried to grow it illegally, perhaps, but mostly it was the contamination. And they would send them a lawsuit letter saying, if, we don't, if you don't give me $170,000, we will we'll sue you and end your business. And there were documented cases where people never bought Monsanto seeds, but lost in court. Because like in Canada, the Supreme Court of Canada said, it doesn't matter how it gets there by insects, by wind. If it gets on your farm and you harvest it like you've done for 50 years and replant the seeds like you've done for 50 years, you're now in violation of Monsanto Monsanto's patent rights, and you have to give all of your crops to Monsanto. So it's a, it was, I mean, the way they've manipulated and used the law, it's just, it's just uh, astounding. Wow. You know, I, I think that um, people may 
complain, or, you know, I'm thinking about the person watching this because we're saying, hey, pretty uh, simple solution here. Um, eat 100% organic. And be, again, I always tell people caution with oils because um, oils are GMO and, and sprayed uh, obviously from plants, from seeds that have been sprayed with uh, glyphosate. So soybean oils, vegetable oils, I don't trust any of it, obviously. But the point is, is we're saying a simple solution is eat all organic, you know, but yet it costs 30% more, people might say. And that's a deterrent to them. So convince my viewer that number one, it's worth paying this, otherwise pay later, um, or maybe there's strategies to offset some of that too. I'm going to, there's certainly strategies. Um, I have, after people watch Secret Ingredients, everyone's scrambling to eat organic. So we created a 90 day lifestyle upgrade to help people go up that learning curve. And one of the things is how to save money and how to, in some cases, spend less than you're spending now, especially if you're going to start cooking or before you were buying processed pre-cooked foods. Um, there are ways to save money and it's too numerous to go into them. And there's plenty of resources for that. Yeah, you but I want to, but I want to go into the mindset because this is really important. If you combine your health budget with your food budget, <laughs> you have enough money. And oh, when we, when in the film, we had families with, with kids in elementary school who never went to the doctor. And the doctor, the nurses said, this is unheard of. You have three kids in, in elementary school and you never come in. Said, well, they're never sick. They That's were very family. sick until they switched to organic. Another family that, that didn't wasn't in the film, they were spending $18,000 a year in health, in, in uh, medical bills, six of them. It went organic, the next year was 9,000, the next year was under 3,000. And saving money for health is great, but it also improves your lifestyle, but it also improves your lifestyle because brain fog and fatigue, they can go away. And so your ability to, to produce, and so it's part of your budget is your own lifestyle budget, your own pr uh, production budget. And then while you're at it, add some of your philanthropy money, because what you're doing when you spend money on organic is you are, and we'll talk about this in a moment with the existential threats that could wipe out all living beings and all future generations like nothing I've seen. The philanthropy side is you're making a better world and you're also protecting the farmers that grow your food because it's the farmers who get cancer more than others. It's Absolutely. the farmers who have to get absorbed through their skin. Debilitating arthritis, every condition you can imagine, it's horrifying. Yeah, so it, from a mindset standpoint, we now spend small, the least amount of our personal income on food than any time in American history, maybe anywhere in the world. And the, the, the cheap food has a very high cost. I was sitting at an airport once and there was, I think we were heading to, there was a, a big thing in Vegas and there was a conversation of probably eight farmers behind me, right? And uh, it was pretty amazing conversation. It was hard for me not to break in but I knew I wouldn't impact them because I had I was going to have to change their whole the way that they did life and farm right, which wasn't going to happen in a simple conversation. But the, the conversation went like this: they literally were sharing the miracles of the chemicals that they were using, right, and talking about this chemical and oh yeah, I went to this chemical. So the whole conversation went to the chemical, and then somehow, and I'm thinking in my mind, man, I because I, I they were all severely overweight and they were all I could tell unhealthy. And most of them were younger than me, probably. And all then it went to all their aches and pains, their arthritis and their medications. And, they were, and then they started sharing information about their pain medications and, blah, 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 and try this and this and that. You know, and look, first of all, I know the science on this glyphosate chemical. It's causing obesity, the inability to lose weight. It's causing hormone problems, which they all had. Chronic pain, arthritis, rheumatoid, which they all had. And yet, I mean, eight out of eight, we're suffering. And yet, if I went into the conversation like, hey, I can help you stop using the chemicals that y'all were <laughs> boasting about, imagine that conversation where it went. But that's the reality, Jeffrey. That's the reality. And yeah, there's a lot of fun. To some degree to everyone in the country. Of course, they're being overexposed. And I can't tell you how many people I've had to help that were farmers and linked to this chemical, even downwind, some purposely, some unpurposely, and their life. 
uh, they look, they, they've got their life back to a certain degree just by cleaning up their life, but there is some permanent damage too. Yeah, there's a lot of farmers that will switch to organic because of getting cancer yeah. and finally realizing it's too dangerous. Some farmers will have um, food that they sell and food that they eat and the food that they eat is organic. Yeah, it's, it's a tragedy. So let, let's shift the conversation. Um, this before I, I shift the conversation I, on that government uh, uh, conversation, you've been at this. You've dug up a lot. What is the most shocking thing that you've dug up in the years of cover up? Wow, Am I putting you on the spot with this question. No, I love that question. I ask that question to everyone I've interviewed for my books, because to me, that's 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 makes good material. <laughs> um, and no one has asked me the question <laughs> in 26 years. Um, and I don't have a clear one single shocking moment, but what is interesting is how, how blatant the fraud is, how serious the dangers are and how well documented it is. And yet the biotech industry can still get away with the lies. I mean, I'm, I'm releasing a new film about gene editing soon. And there's so much evidence that gene editing causes massive damage. And many scientists say that it's worse than the original GMOs. And yet they were able to convince the US government. They're trying to convince the Canadian government. They convinced the British government, the Australian government. They're trying to convince you EU, mm -hmm. the South American governments to completely look the other way because it's so precise and it's so safe and it's so natural. And it's a handful of paid individuals and organizations who are given talking points that are entirely nonsensical, let alone non-scientific. And yet they're able to convince governments and put all future generations at risk. And so that's the most shocking thing that I can convince virtually any, any audience, given the amount of time that we have, that this stuff is dangerous. I have all the, I mean, I can win debates against any GMO scientist because we have data and science on our side. And yet they've got billions of dollars and they have tremendous influence. However, here's the good news before we leave the food side. Bye. My focus years ago was to use their Achilles heel. Consumers, consumers who will hear the truth and then seek non-GMO food, making the continued use of GMO ingredients a marketing liability. And that's what happened starting in 2013 and 14. And now tremendous numbers of companies are switching to non-GMO because the competition puts the word non-GMO in their package and starts to erode the market share of the one who isn't. So now 51%, the majority of Americans consume, or the consumers are saying GMOs are unsafe to eat, 48% worldwide. We built a movement to create that effect for the mm. tipping point. So the good news is, as we step out of the food, and by the way, to get a report on which foods have high levels of glyphosate, which foods have GMOs, you can go to responsibletechnology.org, responsibletechnology.org, and, and help you eat healthier food, because sometimes you can't always have organic, it's not available. But we are winning that battle. Mm. But then they introduced GMO 2.0, and we have a whole nother war. This one, we're protecting everything all future generations. Well, let's take the conversation in that uh, direction, right? That's some of the new work that you're doing, right? Um, so we have a new risk, right? And I, I think we've talked a little bit about, you know, GMO, obviously it's sprayed more. Um, obviously the GMO is related to cancer and how, uh, what it's doing to our, you know, microbiome, how it's altering our DNA. I kind of thought that's where we're going in the beginning, but it can alter our DNA even via altering the microbiome. So GMOs have all of this uh, plus the chemical. What's the new problem? Well, you're right about the altering our DNA through epigenetic effects that can be inherited to many generations. The fourth generation of 
mice exposed to Roundup had worse health damage than the first, second, and third. The great grandchildren suffered more. Mm. So the GMO 2.0, this gene editing, from a bigger standpoint, I'm going to get to the microbiome in just a second. From the bigger standpoint, because it's so cheap to genetically engineer now, everything with DNA is targeted, all the kingdoms. And once you release a GMO, you can't recall it, it can self-propagate. And the most common result of genetic engineering is surprise side effects. So future generations might not inherit the products of the billions of years of evolution that we did, but instead the products of laboratory creations, mm -hmm. causing little genetic time bombs to have some kind of problem somewhere down the line that we can't do anything more about once it's released. But of all the kingdoms that can be genetically engineered, the ones that, that comprise the microbiome, bacteria, viruses, archaea, algae, fungus, these are life and mission critical. You have talked about the microbiome to your audience, but I'll just describe a couple of things. We co-evolved with the microbes inside us mm -hmm. to such an extent that they orchestrate so much of our lives. We've outsourced maybe 90% of our daily metabolic functions. And what they do is something that our bodies can't do. They do some things that are just mind blowing. In the second trimester of pregnancy, for example, milk digesting bacteria move into the birth canal to inoculate the baby so that the baby can digest milk. A substantial portion of the breast milk is indigestible by the baby. It's not for the baby, it's for the microbiome. The saliva of the infant who's breastfeeding is changed, the microbiome is changed by the health of the baby, it's fed back to the mother through the breast, changing the formula in the milk. Yeah. Why? Because the microbiome in that child, if it's set right, sets a healthy lifetime and even future generations because it can get passed on again to others. This is how critical it is. Mm. It is so fundamental to our health, 80% of diseases are supposedly found in a imbalance, their source an imbalance in the microbiome. But that's just in the human, in human side. The microbiome is everywhere. Yeah. Now I'm going to talk about my film, Don't Let the Gene Out of the Bottle. It's at protectnaturenow.com, protectnaturenow.com. Right there, you'll open it, 16 minute film. It shows as one of the examples that we give, a microbe that was created by well-meaning scientists that would turn cellular matter, plant matter, into alcohol. So it could be given out to farmers who could take the crop stubble on their field and instead of burning it, mix it with the bacteria, they end up with alcohol to run their tractors and the nutrient rich sludge at the bottom could be used as fertilizer. They were about ready to release it to see how far it would spread around the world. By that way, that, that sounds very sellable. I mean, yeah. it sounds very good. Wait a minute. So I can do this and, and take this, what I would throw away and make gas uh, for my tractor and compost for my fields. Ah, oh, I'm in. Let me sign on the dotted line. Yeah, I mean, well-meaning. There's a lot of well-meaning scientists out there who want to use genetic engineering to improve the nature of nature. And here's an example. And here's an example of what almost happened. A graduate student whose advisor is a friend of mine, Dr. Elaine Ingham, needed to do some research for his PhD and got permission to work on the microbe and put it into the soil and started growing wheat and came in one Saturday morning and realized all of the seeds that had been planted in the soil that had been mixed with the microbes were dead. It turned the roots and the, then the plants to alcohol. It was slime. Wow. And this means that if the farmers had taken this and spread it on their fields, it would have rendered their fields infertile. But they were two weeks away, not from sending it to farmers yet, but from releasing it outside to see how far it would spread. Dr. Elaine Ingham, been very public about this concern about the microbes, spoke at the UN, and an EPA whistleblower, and more than one, told her 
that they know how far GMO bacteria spread. They had done a secret experiment, which the EPA still denies, releasing GMO bacteria in a Louisiana field and setting up monitors and found it moved out 11 miles in the first year and another 11, and then eventually was found all over the world. So if the GMO, it's called Klebsiella planticula was the, was the parent strain, which is found on the roots of every single crop on the planet, every single plant on the planet. You're saying now because it had spread because no, of no, that no, no, no. It, it, it's natural version. Okay, you're saying they're they the natural that version. The natural bacteria. They alter it. Yeah, the natural bacteria is everywhere. Okay. If they had released the altered version, and if it had displaced, got it. The natural version, which you can do theoretically because it can kill it because the alcohol is deadly to the un, to the non genetically engineered. Klebsiella planticula, if it had dominated and taken over that niche, I asked Elaine Ingham what might have happened. She said, could have ended terrestrial plant life. Hmm. Now that's one, one microbe doing what it was supposed to do only too well. We know from pandemic that you release a microbe, travels around the world, that's obvious to everyone now. Yeah, exactly. It, yeah. it mutates. That's obvious to everyone now, which yeah. means what you intended is has nothing to do with how it's performing. <laughs> Two years ago, people might not have got what you're saying. No, I mean, this what is, you a, mean? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is open the receptor cells of humanity on this issue. And people don't realize that the microbes swap genes with other species. So you release okay. one microbe that may create alcohol or fix nitrogen or do something in your narrow focus, put your blinders on area. And before you know it, there's a thousand or 10,000 different microbe types in 10,000 different ecosystems causing permanent damage or ecosystem collapse. And some of those ecosystems can be inside the human body. So the issue is, it is an absolutely uncontrollable experiment with one of the most fundamental aspects of life. And you can create a GMO microbe in the privacy of your own home for $169. The price is going to go down, the power is going to go up, all the high school classes are going to be equipped, all the college laboratories are going to be equipped, every biology um, group is going to be, uh, biology company is going to be, they're already involved with CRISPR as one of the gene editing companies. And we're going to see millions of genetically engineered microbes created, and a lot of them released into the environment. And that means that the future of all living beings and all and all future generations is at risk. So when I realized this, and we realized this at our Institute for Responsible Technology, nonprofit, we realized we have spoken enough about food. We'll answer questions. Thank you for your questions. But the product, the information we're creating now is going to be primarily dedicated to building a new movement. I spent 25 years, 45 countries, building a movement on the GMO health dangers. Right. Now we need to build a movement much more quickly on the dangers of GMO microbes to pass laws around the world so that no one is allowed to release a GMO microbe and that we lock them down. Mm. And while we're at it, we also, even indoors, we don't create the potentially pandemic pathogens that can create pandemics if they release because mm -hmm. over a thousand accidents in high, high biosecurity facilities say that it's a myth of biocontainment. Right. So we have to take a new relationship with nature now that we have the technology to destroy it so easily, to redirect the streams of evolution for all time in 10 minutes. You know what the frustrating part is, is that mo much of this is under the disguise of protecting global warming. You know, a lot of this is under that political disguise and agenda of solving the problem of global warming and the drive. But I, I know that a lot of these technologies um, are being ushered in with the power of that movement. Would you agree with that? You, you set me up like a slow, slow softball pitch for me to hit it. <laughs> Thank you for that. That was nice. <clears throat> In, I'm a strategist and always trying to think what's the easiest way to accomplish our goals, in this case, protect humanity and Earth. 
Um, and it's too long to build a movement from scratch. So, <coughs> so we need to figure out which movements out there that have big reach and power and their champions in co Congress and Senate and Parliament and all that. There's one right there. Exactly. And, we're, and, and so there's national defense for obvious reasons. You can create a, a disaster on purpose or by accident, national security. There's human health. We talked about it. We talked about environmental problems, ocean problems, invasive species. But then there's regenerative agriculture. Regenerative agriculture uses the microbes in the soil to have higher yields, healthier plants, and it, as a byproduct, it draws down carbon. And there's now research, and I'm talking to some of the most advanced regenerative agriculture practitioners and scientists in the world, there's evidence that we can completely draw down 100% of all carbon emissions every year. So there's net zero just from agriculture. And if you also drive down emissions at the same time, we can achieve pre-industrial levels while improving the health of farmers because it reduces the use of chemicals like you talked about, improving their bottom line because it increases yields, improving the soil. We have 55 seasons of soil left because of the wash off of topsoil. This builds soil. Mm -hmm. So it solves the problems that conventional industrial agriculture have created. It solves the problems of climate change. And so I went to DC with two of the world's experts in regenerative agriculture, and we got such fantastic receptivity. But because you're to... riding an existing wave and trying to instead of trying to create yeah. a wave, which would be it'd be too late at that point, right? Yeah. And so we're we're on that wave right now, and we're coming in with the insurance policy saying everything these experts are talking about requires a functioning soil microbiome and that requires a lockdown of gmo microbes you know, or, so that, and that makes me feel good because so much so many things are riding that wave and it's such crap it's political crap and yet you're riding the wave which would have been my recommendation mm -hmm. be like look hey ride that wave you know because you have a chance but you're riding it with the real problem yeah. you know, and what's happening to our soils and what's happening and that's devastating you know what's happening to the food supply Absolutely. So I want to give three recommendations to your listeners on this issue. See, we've talked about the the health health dangers of GMOs and Roundup, and the issue is eat organic, and when you can't, uh, at least eat non-GMO, and then get choose the foods that have lower residues of glyphosate. You can find that information at responsibletechnology.org. But what do you do about genetically engineered microbes? Your choices in the supermarket will not affect it, hardly. We have a plan. And the plan, and you can be participate in that plan. And the first stage is to go to protectnaturenow.com and watch the 16-minute film. Mm -hmm. Then every month or two or three, we have a new campaign at our advocacy platform, which is right there next to the film link. And then you can go there and enter your address and all of your elected officials show up in a single click, or if you want to customize it, take a little longer. They all get the information from that educational campaign, white papers, legislative reports, films, articles, and all of your local and regional press are there. Single click, they get a press announcement. You can also socialize it to the tweet, Twitter accounts of your elected officials, all there, one, two, three. Then when you're done with that, go to the donate button at the top of the page and make a monthly recurring donation so that we can actually open offices all over the world and engage in a movement of millions of people so that people everywhere know about this. Just getting the governments to change and put laws in is not a permanent solution because governments change and laws change. I was flown by the Polish government to their country from the United States to give a press conference with their environment and with their Minister of Environment praising their non-GMO policy. A week later, a new government was voted into place that was pro-GMO. We can't rely just on governments, although they need to pass the laws. We need popular culture and academia, and we have a plan for that. But we need support. So this is a way to get on our team, being a 
a click and send revolutionary with our advocacy platform and to be a donor, whatever amount, $5, whatever amount, but we know if it's recurring, we can know what we can afford right. to pay, to hire, to build a new asset, to create yeah. a new event. And this That's is, how people can get involved. This is the real problem here, right? You know, so so protectnature.com. Protect nature now. Oh, protect nature now, glad I asked. Dot com and then uh, watch the 16 minute film and then um, advocacy after, platform. Yep, I, I'm, that's why I'm reviewing it. Okay. <laughs> it, it. Hit the platform from there and then what? Donate. donate. The donate button. Got it. You go back to the main page and there's a donate button. And I always encourage everyone to be a regular donor, even if it's a small amount. We want people, you see, the thing is this. We're, it turns out that if there's, a, if there's a silver lining to the pandemic, you named it, everyone's aware about microbes now. They travel and they mutate. There's mm. more availability, availability to receive and process this information in the collective consciousness than ever before. Yeah. But we're also in a situation where, because it's so now inexpensive to gene edit, we are facing the cliff. You know how, and you know this so well, when someone is in a, a healing crisis, whether it's terminal or that turns out to be non-terminal, whatever, they'll use that opportunity to transform and, and adopt a new experience in life. And they, it turns out that sickness becomes a blessing. Well, collectively, collective consciousness, humanity, we are now facing a life threat, threatening situation. And the higher level that we can go to is a completely new understanding of our role with nature. Instead of being the manipulator and looking back and changing it and let it fly, you know, whatever may happen, we need to protect nature. We need to steward it. We need to hold nature precious and keep that gene pool moving in a naturally evolving state. Otherwise, yeah. we will destroy biological evolution as we know it, starting with this generation and be cursed by all future generations. So yeah. this, means, this means a way of engaging collectively as a human and that's what I want people to think about when they donate, where they realize they're stepping up and taking responsibility. Instead of pushing it off for someone else will do it, someone else will do it. It's like, I'll do it. I can contribute my $5 and I can be part of that team. And the same way I can change my relationship with nature at the same time and saying, I'm here for you. I'll be a microbiome whisperer. Well, you know what? And we have to change the conversation, right? Because so much of the science and uh, you know, cl the climate, the, the global warming, all is, is such crap. This is the real deal. This is the problem. But as all things, it's like, you know, no one really is hitting what's the big problem. And this is the big problem, right? But we have to get both sides understanding that this is the real problem. The problem is, you know, it's looping it into the political agenda. <laughs> so, you know, but we have to do our part this is the real deal. Yes. Allow me to jump into politics a little. No, bit. that's I'm, the point. It's, yeah, this you is can the just, real problem. Yeah, just give yeah. me some wind under my sails and I'll I'll fly for you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. This is the real this is the real problem that's going on and we just have to bring awareness to it. And I think most people would realize that. Even people who are realize, you know, they see the uh, negative around the whole global warming thing, they would realize this and go, "Okay, there's there's actual science here. This is real good stuff." Jeffrey, thank you. Uh, for making people aware of all of it. Uh, this is a show people are going to want to share. Thank you for the free downloads. Thank you for all the resources that you brought. Uh, you've given people a plan. Start organic. Start by donating here. Hey, you gave us some clear things. Thank you, Jeffrey. Thank you so much, Doc. I want to give thanks to one of our sponsors, Cyto Defend. Look, at a time like this, I think that our immune system and keeping our immune system up right now is more important than ever. I can also tell you that I pay attention to the things that keep my immune system on par and healthy. So, so glad that Cyto Defend is one of our sponsors here on Cell TV. And it's a product that I use, my family uses, and hopefully you'll check it out. And by the way, you can check it out with the link right here below. If you wanna try a free bottle, you can actually get a free bottle, just pay the shipping. And I think you'll reorder after that, but check it out. 
If you're listening to this podcast and want to access the amazing Cytodefend product Dr. Pompa just mentioned, please visit freeimmunity.com. Again, that's freeimmunity.com. Well, that's it for this week. The materials and content within this podcast are intended as general information only and are not to be considered a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. If you would like to purchase some of the supplements mentioned on this show, please visit the site as seen on chtv.com and use the code chtv15 for 15% off. Again, that's as seen on chtv.com. Use the code chtv15 for 15% off. And as always, thanks for listening.